Hey guys, um, I'm Jose and welcome to the second tutorial on Grasshopper. So, today we're going to see one of the most common tutorials that you can find out there, but it's a really good one in the sense that it's very clear how we, how some of the data it's organizing Grasshopper and it's basically the concept of data matching, right? So I'm just going to draw quickly two curves here, like what could be a straight line and another one could be a curve, doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm going to just click curve just to call a curve here and I'm gonna load one curve this is stuff that we know how to do based on the first tutorial right so I'm gonna copy this one and just set another curve here um, maybe I wanna get rid of the grid so I'm gonna just say show grid, grid no um, so what we're gonna do is an operation that it's divide curve right so we can just look for that in here and curve, go into analysis, um, and somewhere here division, yeah, uh, you can find divide curve by length or by different options, right? So what I'm going to do is just type divide curve because I like um, usually to call these commands this way, and this command will allow us to divide the curve, basically we input a curve, you can see that we already get a result from this, we don't really need to put anything else, but it gives us an option to just um, input the number of divisions, right? And it also gives us um, the option to uh, split in segments, uh, and by default it's false, right? So, so that some of these common, uh, parameters have default values, so you don't need to input them. You can obviously override them, so let's see how to do that. And um, we are going to do that by using a slider. So the slider is one of the main ingredients, or at least for like parametric design it is, right? So we're just gonna bring one of these sliders is here, or you can just always call it by typing slider, number slider, right? Um, and the problem is that this slider right now, you can move it around, oh, this is good, but like it is between 0 and 1, right? And number of divisions, you cannot really uh, specify number of divisions like 0 0.4 number of divisions, right? So we need to just switch this slider from something that it's a floating point, that means a decimal place number, to something that is an integer, that is a um, full number, right? So um, important as well is that we want to get beyond 1. We want to be able to, to access like values beyond, let's say, maybe 10 or 20, right? So let's go ahead and type edit. And the first thing we can, I mean, right click and we can see that we can change a few things, like right? slider type, let's switch that to integers, right? So now you can see that I have 0 or 1. Not, I cannot just input a decimal place, so that's good. And I also need to edit this value. So you'll see that this is a window where we can affect some of the properties of that slider and I'm going to input as a maximum value maybe 20 right so you'll see that now I can access from 0 to 20 and that's pretty good so I'm going to just connect here and you'll see that I can just increase or decrease the number of divisions of this curve right and basically I want to be able to do the same thing now I'm going to repeat this operation so I'm going to pick this slider plus the divide uh, by pressing shift and click and you see I can select two things and I'm gonna just repeat this but you see that now I can switch the connection of the curve to be in the operation to this other curve right so this is actually happening to each one of them so let's say I'm gonna put something like 20 to one of them and 20 to the other one right so you can see that we have control over uh, each one of these curves. The other thing that you can do is just use the same slider for both curves, right? You can see that we can control both curves simultaneously, right? But for now, I'm just going to leave it separately. Why? Because I want to show you what happens, how does uh, data matching happen? And there's a few options for that. So. What if we want to connect each one of these points that we had just created on the base on the division, right, between each other? So let's go ahead and look for something called a line. So you see that line, this line uh, node is for loading lines into the screen. This one is for actually building lines out of two points, right? So this is the one that we want, A and B. And if we just connect the point uh, 
you see the point, the outputs of this node, there's three things, right? Division of points, a point, uh, also the tangent vectors, and there's the parameters of the division points. So there's a lot of outputs that come from each node, right? Some of them are useful to do other things. Um, the, the tricky thing here is that we are basically not dealing with one output as one point, but we're dealing with a series of outputs, right? So let's visualize that first by using this panel called the command panel. So this panel allows us to just write something like, hey guys, right? Or it also is useful to connect something like if you want to check what it's inside, what is the output of this node, it will show you, you can see here, that this node is kind of outputting a series of points, right? So these are coordinates, right? So don't get too scared about it. You have some information here, some index. The point that is x, y, z, and there's some information here that is the path, right? So this is a series of points. And if we check the other series, right, also a series of points. So that's interesting. There's not one point, but many points. And that makes sense because we're dividing, right? So what happens if we try to make a line between, oops, between two series of points? We get this, right? We get that every point, the first point gets connected to the first point in the second list and so forth. This happens all across the list. And that's something great, but there's options for that. We need to understand that that is not, uh, I mean, that's the default, but the, there could be moments in which this might not happen, right? So this is what we call data, the data matching. So what I'm going to do is just decrease the number of points in one side, and you'll see that we start getting a problem, right? It happens that we have this uh, certain number of points, let's say 20 here, but only 10 in this side. So what happens when this point wants to connect to the other point is just basically they're connecting to this to the last one, right? And that's because we have an option enabled that is if we go here in line, right? That is the only node that is basically trying to match data between these two. That is called the longest list, right? I'm just right clicking in the middle of the node and you'll see that the longest list is on. We can also use shortest list. Right, so if we use shortest list, you'll see that only the data that it's kind of correlative, right, is actually being built. So that's important to know. Like sometimes you will definitely have the same number of uh, points in both sides, but not all the time. So this is where you apply, let's say, long list or short list. And there's a third option, which is the cross reference, and this will connect basically everything with everything else, and you might not visualize yet why is this uh, why this option is kind of useful but but it will be like uh, if you want to just let's say create a grid uh, it's a really good way of use uh, doing a grid but we'll do that in some other tutorial so for now it's important to understand that we have long list and this basically applies when you have two lists that are not necessarily with the same amount of points or uh, information basically uh, the option of the short list and the cross reference. So this is data matching and um, understanding this will help us really kind of start moving on. Okay, so this is it for now.